So here's what I think. I think after people watch this video, they'll understand why Piedmont Women's Center is still standing after 30 years. I'm gonna try not to get emotional talking about it, but Bill Gouch and Tommy, amazing human beings, yes. Lovers of Jesus and prayer warriors. When I think about them, and when the idea of Night for Life, we were talking through what we were going to do, uh, Bill Gouch was the first person God put on my mind for this 30-year celebration. And I wanted him to just share his heart. I wanted him to tell us about the early days. And then I wanted him to just write a prayer. This guy prays like I, you just can't even imagine. I can't wait for you to watch this video. It is so good. But I wanted him to kind of pray for what we're going through in our world, in our times. And all I can say is watch this video. And if you're not blown away like we are, then I don't know who you are. It's amazing. There was a little house next door to the abortion clinic. And as we counseled on the sidewalks or on the, the roadside, we kept saying to one another and saying to God, God, why, why can't we get that little house and turn it into a, a place where we could talk to these girls and, and have a chance to, you know, tell them the truth about what's about to happen to them and, and what it's going to do to their lives. After we got a lot of no's from dear friends that were afraid to be involved with us, we just decided we're just going to do it. We asked a girl at church, she gave us $400 for our first month's rent. And with that $400, we went down and signed the lease. And we were off. We figured, well, we can at least keep it open 30 days. 30 days, if we can only keep it open 30 days, we could save somebody's life. The day we opened it, there was a little grandmother that came down, sidewalk counseling at the abortion clinic next door, and we came to open the doors, and she was sitting on the stool on the, on the porch with a girl that she had talked out of going inside the abortion clinic and had invited to our place next door. Well, that little girl came in there She saved her baby. She got saved. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. And before the end of the day, seven or eight girls had done the same thing. The first day we opened the door. And we were off. And in the beginning, it was not called the Piedmont Women's Center. It was called the Greenville Women's Center, right next to, to the Greenville Women's Clinic. And you can imagine why we did that, and you can imagine the effect that it had. And it was very effective. It was so effective that within a matter of a month or, or a few weeks, the abortionists decided to sue us. And that's how it became the Piedmont Women's Center, because we had to change the name or suffer all the rigors of a lawsuit. So with that said, here we are 30 years later. So in John 15, five through eight, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you would desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So then you will be my disciples. Lord, in... 2 Chronicles 7, 14, you spoke to us and you said, if my people, which are called by my name, 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So Father, we stand amazed in this 30th year of beholding your faithfulness. You, Lord Jesus, are the only person here worthy of any praise. We praise you for what you have done. You, intrepid Lord, are never afraid to follow your lost sheep into the depths of depravity and rescue them from the wolf, the bear, or the lion. You called us to follow you, Jesus, through the darkest valleys, even unto death. And we heard you call to us. Look, here are my sheep. Here are my most desperate, my most tormented, my most stained, and my most enslaved. All driven to the most wicked for shearing. Here is where the innocent are slaughtered for the guilty. This is where I want you to cast your net. This is where I look through your eyes into the eyes of the hopeless. And this is where I will embrace the abandoned. This is where I will shelter the outcast. This is where I will heal the broken, release from prison the condemned, and bind up the brokenhearted. This is where I will speak life into the face of death. This is where I, through my church, will build, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so it has been, Lord, with this engine of salvation, this lifeboat, this haven, this arm of deliverance, this hope for the desperate, and this balm for the torn. We are here, Lord. You called us. You equipped us. You sent us. You sustained us. You have reached through us to them, and you have saved them through us. You have rescued them through us. And now once again, we are here at the turning of the world and we're looking to you, Lord. The only hope for life, for the perishing. Father, we lift up our praises to you. And with them, we lift our cries, the cries of the anguished. How long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord? As Brother Martin said, Lord, if he has a dream, if we had a dream, you can't have a dream without a life. You can't have little boys and girls without little babies. There are uncontested death camps throughout our land, and there are cities without a single haven. There are places where only a few brave souls weather the storms, attempting to rescue the innocent being dragged away to death. So we cry out, O oh Lord, lead your people again and take this bread and fish-bearing basket and bless it, break it, and give it to the nations. We cry out for China and for Russia. We cry out for Europe and Australia, Africa and North and South America. We cry out for the Middle East and the islands of every sea. We cry out to you, Lord, do this again. In our weakness, you are made strong. In our weakness, in our weakness, Lord. Our weakness is great and so must your strength be. We lift our eyes and say, Behold, sovereign Lord, these fields are white and ready with harvest. And the laborers are few. Send forth laborers into the harvest, Lord God. Continue to guide and provide for this work which you have begun. Through the, though the world grows dim and lifeless, shine brightly from this lamp upon our stand and raise up your children in this place to love with courage and love with endurance and love with sacrifice, to love with an abandonment which honors you. Replace our hearts of stone with your everlasting burning heart. And open our eyes that we may see through darkness to find the fearful and the broken hiding in the shadows. Grant us ears that hear the voice of God saying, Here is the way. Go in it. Go in it. We pray, O oh Lord. 
You would press hearts here, young and old, to follow you even through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray that you would press hearts here for provisions for the sojourners who have answered your call. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this work. We thank you for these faithful workers. And we say with Nehemiah, please remember them always for the great work they've done for your house. We thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in his name and no other name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you just, mm, that, that video gives me chills every time. Um, so this is an issue that is worldwide. And uh, what can you do about it? Uh, we have three ways at Piedmont Women's Center that we believe will end abortion. Uh, ways that you guys can partner with us to end abortion in the world as we know it. So the first, pray. We have a prayer text community. Please click on the link and we'll, uh, you'll be able to sign up for that. We'll text you if an abortion-minded woman comes into the clinic so that you can specifically pray for that woman in her time of crisis. Uh, the second option would be to serve. We always have volunteer needs here at Piedmont Women's Center, and we would love to see your faces with us every day as we work in this very, very prominent issue in our, in our world. And you can be part of it that way. Then our third way is to give. So pray, serve, give. If you click on the link, you will see options to become either a monthly partner or donate a one-time gift. And we would love to see you guys partner with us in that way and become a part of our donor community. And then um, the last way you can join us tomorrow. That's right. Kelly, why don't you tell us about tomorrow? Yeah, so um, Bill Gouch just planted a flag. And uh, tomorrow, Rowan Warren is going to score a touchdown. Rowan uh, is an amazing man. He is a former college football player, played football at Princeton, and I am really excited for you to hear his message and what it means not to just be pro-life, because anybody can be pro-life, but what it means to be pro-abundant life. So you don't want to have tuned in every day this week and then miss the touchdown tomorrow. So join us tomorrow. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Mm -hmm.